fascinating history and evolution of Afro-Puerto Rican in the world. The amazing world of one of the biggest worldwide movie franchises, Marvel Universe, has graced the movie industry with some of the most fascinating characters, the likes of Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, Black Panther and so many more. If you've ever watched the movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse by Marvel, high chances are you've come across Mike Morales, the main protagonist who replaces the cliché of white-skinned colored Spider-Man characters in recent series of the franchise. Now here's the interesting fact, did you know that Mike Morales was Afro-Puerto Rican? Perhaps not. What is the fascinating history and evolution of the Afro-Puerto Rican? And how could it be so important a character from that descent was featured in the movie? You see, Afro-Puerto Ricans have quite an interesting history and evolution. Before the Afro part was added, history recognized the Puerto Ricans, obviously from Puerto Rico. The earliest verified historic account in Puerto Rico reveals that it was settled by a succession of indigenous peoples beginning from 2000 to 4000 years ago. This included the likes of the Otoroid, the Saladoid and the Taino. It was then colonized by Spain following the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1493. Puerto Rico was contested by other European powers but remained a Spanish possession for the next four centuries. An influx of African slaves and settlers, primarily from the Canary Islands and Andalusia, vastly changed the cultural and demographic landscape of the island. Within the Spanish Empire, Puerto Rico played a secondary but strategic role compared to wealthier colonies like Peru and New Spain. And by the late 19th century, a distinct Puerto Rican identity began to emerge centered around a fusion of indigenous, African and European elements. In 1898, following the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico was acquired by the United States. Today, Puerto Rico is a Caribbean island and incorporated territory of the United States. It is located in the Northeast Caribbean Sea, approximately 1,000 miles southeast of Miami, Florida, between the Dominican Republic and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and includes the eponymous main island and several smaller islands such as Mona, Culebra and Vieques. It has roughly 3.2 million residents and its capital and most popular city is San Juan. The two official languages of Puerto Ricans are Spanish and English, though Spanish predominates. The history of the Afro-Puerto Ricans is traced as far back as the 15th century when Christopher Columbus arrived at Puerto Rico in 1493. He originally called the island San Juan Bautista but thanks to the gold in the river, it was soon known as Puerto Rico or rich port. Because of the abundance in gold and the capital city took the name San Juan. Soon, Puerto Rico was a Spanish colony on its way to becoming an important military outpost. Over time, Puerto Rico began to produce cattle, sugarcane, coffee and tobacco, which led to the importation of slaves from Africa. You see, this was during the era of the slave trade and so most of the transatlantic transactions of slaves ended up in Puerto Rico as one of the main hubs. When the Spaniards led by Christopher Columbus and Ponce de Leon arrived on the island of Puerto Rico, they were greeted by the Cacique Aquibana, the supreme leader of the peaceful Taino tribes on the island. Aquibana helped to maintain the peace between the Taino and the Spaniards. According to historian Ricardo Alegria, in 1509, Juan Garrido was the first free African man to set foot on the island. He was a conquistador who was part of Juan Ponce de Leon's entourage. Garrido was born on the West African coast, the son of an African king. In 1508, he joined Juan Ponce de Leon to explore Puerto Rico and prospect for gold. In 1511, he fought under Ponce de Leon to repress the Carib and the Taino who had joined forces in Puerto Rico in a great revolt against the Spaniards. Garrido next joined Hernan Cortes in the Spanish conquest of Mexico. Another free African man who accompanied de Leon was Pedro Mejas. Mejas married a Taino woman, Chief, by the name of Yusha. Yusha was baptized as Catholic so that she could marry Mejas. She was given the Christian name of Luisa. The town Luisa, Puerto Rico was named after her. The peace between the Spanish and the Taino, however, was short-lived. The Spanish took advantage of the Taino's good faith and enslaved them, forcing them to work in the gold mines and in the construction of forts. Many Taino died in the process, particularly due to epidemics of smallpox to which they had no immunity. Initial Importation of African Slaves to Puerto Rico Freya Bartolome de la Casas, who had accompanied Ponce de Leon, was outraged at the Spanish treatment of the Taino. In 1512, he protested at the Council of the Burgos at the Spanish court. He fought for the freedom of the natives and was able to secure their rights. 
The Spanish colonists, fearing the loss of their labor force, also protested before the courts. They complained that they needed manpower to work in the mines, build forts and supply labor for the thriving sugarcane plantations. As an alternative, Las Casas suggested importation and use of African slaves. In 1517, the Spanish crown permitted its subjects to import 12 slaves each, thereby beginning the African slave trade in their colonies. According to historian Luis M. Diaz, the largest contingents of African slaves came from the areas of the present-day Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Nigeria. All these current countries are located in the Gulf of Guinea, areas also known as the Slave Coast. The large majority were Yoruba and Igbo, ethnic groups from Nigeria and Bantu from the Guinea. The number of slaves in Puerto Rico rose from 1,500 in 1530 to 15,000 by 1555. The slaves were stamped with a hot iron on the forehead, a branding which meant that they were brought to the country legally and prevented their kidnapping. African slaves were sent to work in the gold mines to replace the Taino or to work in the fields in the island's ginger and sugar industries. They were allowed to live with their families in a bohio or a herd on their master's land and were given a patch of land where they could plant and grow vegetables and fruits. Africans had little or no opportunity whatsoever for advancement and faced discrimination from the Spaniards. The slaves at the time were forced to forsake their own indigenous languages as they were educated by their masters and soon learned to speak the master's language, educating their own children in the new language. They enriched the Puerto Rican Spanish language by adding words to their own. The Spaniards considered Africans more malleable than the Taino since the latter were unwilling to assimilate. The slaves in countries had little choice but to adapt to their lives. Many converted to Christianity and they were baptized with the Catholic Church and were given the surnames of their masters. Many slaves were subject to harsh treatment and women were subject to sexual abuse. The majority of the conquistadors and farmers who settled in the island had arrived without women, many of them intermarried with the African or Taino women. Their multiracial descendants formed the first generations of the early Afro-Puerto Rican population. In 1527, the first major slave rebellion occurred in Puerto Rico as dozens of slaves fought against the colonists in a brief revolt. The few slaves who escaped retreated to the mountains where they resided as maroons with surviving Tainos. And during the following centuries, by 1873, slaves had carried out more than 20 revolts, some were of great political importance such as the Pons and the Vagabaja conspiracies. By 1570, the colonists found that the gold mines were depleted. After gold mining ended on the island, the Spanish crown bypassed Puerto Rico by moving the western shipping routes to the north. The island became primarily a garrison for those ships that would pass on their way to or from rich colonies. The cultivation of crops such as tobacco, cotton, cocoa and ginger became the cornerstone of the economy. With the scale of Puerto Rico's economy reduced, colonial families tended to farm these crops themselves and the demand for slaves was reduced. With rising demand for sugar on the international market, major planters increased their cultivation and processing of sugar cane, which was ultimately a labor-intensive one. Sugar plantations supplanted mining as Puerto Rico's main industry and kept demand high for African slavery. Spain promoted sugar cane development by granting loans and tax exemptions to the owners of the plantations. They were also given permits to participate in the African slave trade. To attract more workers, in 1664, Spain offered freedom and land to African-descended people from known Spanish colonies, such as Jamaica and Saint Dominic, later Haiti. Most of the free people of color who were able to immigrate were of mixed race with African and European ancestry, typically either British or French paternal ancestry depending on the colony. The migrants provided a population base to support the Puerto Rican garrison and its forts. After 1784, Spain suspended the use of hot branding the slaves' forehead for identification. In addition, it provided ways by which slaves could obtain freedom. The following, a slave could be freed by his master in a church or outside it before a judge by testament or letter. A slave could also be freed against his master's will by denouncing a forced rape, by denouncing a counterfeiter, by discovering disloyalty against the king, and by denouncing murder against his master. Any slave who received part of his master's estate in his master's will was automatically freed. If a slave was made a guardian to his master's children, he was freed. If a slave parents in his panic on America had 10 children, then the whole family was freed. This was a progressive transition to total liberation by the Spanish. 
It was good news to the Afro Puerto Rican community when on March 22, 1873, slavery was finally abolished in Puerto Rico. Since then, the contributions of ethnic Africans to the music, arts, language, heritage have given an instrumental stir in Puerto Rican culture. Over the years, numerous unsuccessful attempts were made by the French, the Dutch, and the English to conquer the island. To guard against its incursions, the Spanish constructed many forts and rampants still found on the island. Puerto Rico remained an overseas province of Spain until the Spanish-American War when the U.S. forces invaded the island with a landing at the Gancha. Under the Treaty of Paris in 1898, 15 years after slavery was abolished, Spain ceded Puerto Rico along with Cuba, the Philippines and Guam to the U.S. As a result, the turn of the century saw Puerto Rico under the United States sovereignty. And at that time, Puerto Rico's economy relied heavily on a sugar crop. But by the middle of the century, an ambitious industrialization effort called Operation Bootstrap was underway. Cheap labor and attractive tax laws attracted American companies and soon the Puerto Rican economy was firmly booming and grounded in manufacturing and tourism. Today, Puerto Rico is a leading touristic destination and manufacturing center. The island produces high-tech equipment and many top-selling American pharmaceuticals. Puerto Ricans received U.S. citizenships in 1917 and Puerto Rico officially became a U.S. Commonwealth in 1952. The issue of political status is one on the constant debate, with some in favor of statehood, others independence, and still others the continuation of Commonwealth status. During World War II, the US Navy purchased two thirds of the island to use as a naval base. The Navy used the area for military exercises and bombing practice for nearly 60 years until a civilian was killed during a bombarding exercise in the 1990s. This sparked a wave of protests that finally ended the base and it was closed in 2003. Since then, the Navy's lands have become a wildlife reserve. Spanish and English are official languages and the currency is the US dollar. The descendants of the freed African slaves and the non-Spanish African colonists have evolved to become the well-renowned Afro-Puerto Rican. So now you can understand the story of Mike Morales from Marvel's Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Thanks for watching and this brings us to the end of this video. Do not forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications. Also drop your thoughts in the comment section below.